Thompson. Check. Check. Butler. Check. Check. Butler. 36C-076. Check. 35C-031. Holly. Precincts out of 830 for mayor. Timothy Butler continues to be a total of <laughs> the party's given them another good licking. Thompson's headquarters have conceded a Butler victory. How does it feel to be mayor, Tim? To tell the truth, I never thought I'd be elected. With the party behind you? How could you miss? You seem quite confident in the party. Politics is another type of a show business. We picked you because, as a young attorney, you had color. That Spencer case alone proved to me that you were a showman. Believe it or not, I took Mrs. Spencer's case against the mortgage loan syndicate because she had no money, and they were trying to take her property. That property was everything she had in the world. Well, got a lot of publicity, made you a public character. The champion of the underdog. That's what the people like. <coughs> Hello? Hello, Gorman? It's Regan. Hello, Regan. Yeah, how are you? Well, we won. Yeah, Thompson's headquarters just phoned, admitting defeat. Yeah, we just got it over the radio. Pretty sweet, eh? I'll say so. Oh, um, have you seen Butler? Yeah, Tim's up here with me now. Are you coming up? No. No, I've got to pay off some of the boys. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Miss Regan, I want to tell me that Thompson's manager just phoned our headquarters admitting defeat. You know, it wouldn't break my heart if I didn't see too much of Regan. Regan? He's one of the best party managers in the country. He knows where all the bodies in the state are buried and who buried them. Uh, just a professional politician. Well, now, where do you think this country would be without politicians? Do you think that the average citizen would take time off to help run the country? There are many who would. Ah! All the average citizen thinks about is making money. He's got no time for politics. He'd rather let the other fellow worry about running the country. As long as he has a place to sleep and something to eat. Well, I'll admit it looks that way at times. It's always that way. As long as the party keeps its nose clean and doesn't get too rough, the average citizen doesn't care what happens to the government. I have a feeling they're about ready to wake up. Well, you'll soon get rid of feeling sorry for a bunch of sheep. Maybe. Well, anyway, my boy, there's one thing you can brag about. You're the youngest mayor ever elected to office in this city. To say nothing of the best looking. Hello, Sylvia. I thought you were tired of election returns. Oh, I've been listening to them in my room. And I want to be the first to congratulate his honor, Timothy Butler, the choice of the people. Thanks. Choice of the people? Ha! <laughs> the old machine makes them choose right every time. Sounds as though looks and youth had little to do with it, Sylvia. It was the old machine. Pay no attention to Dad. His very soul is constructed on party politics. Well, I'd like to see anybody elected in this city without the party. Excuse me, Mr. Butler. Here's a statement you dictated. Uh, let me look at those. It was awfully nice of you to come out here and work tonight, Ellen. And allow me to tell you that you are now secretary to his honor, the mayor. Oh, you were elected? Mm-hmm. I knew you'd win. Daddy. Huh? Wait a minute. Tim. Yes? I'd tone this down a bit if I were you. You don't have to make any promises now. You're elected. This stuff about cleaning up the town is all right before election. But uh, don't make any more promises. You might have to live up to them. Well, what if I do? Oh, well, a gesture or two is all right, good, even necessary. But we can't afford to antagonize the men who put us into office. However, I'll talk that over with you some other time. Now, what's on your mind? How would you like to have a mayor for a son-in-law? Huh? I've seen this coming for some time. Fits right in line with the party. Haven't I already one son-in-law in the Senate? Well, if that's all, Mr. Butler, I think I'll be going. Right. Why, certainly. You must be tired. I'll drop you off myself. I really should be going, too. Oh, don't go yet, Tim. I'll send Miss Manning in with George. There's no need for anyone to take me. My car's outside. 
I'll see you at the office tomorrow, Mr. Butler. Yes. Uh, you needn't drop in until afternoon, Ellen. Thank you. Good night, dear. And thanks a lot. Good night. Come on, I pray. You're making me nervous. Don't be walking behind me. Come on. Hey, we got to get sober. Now, you get me? Good. Let's have a drink, huh? What's that, Ellen? A new expression? No, merely an opinion. What are you doing, Charlie, outside of drinking? Why, well, you're not insinuating that uh, I'm a drinker, are you? No insinuation. But I can honestly say I think you're one of the worst drinkers I know. <laughs> and for years, I've been thinking I'm one of the best. Best or worst? I still don't ever remember having seen you sober. Never. Never use that word sober. You know, for years, I've gone to bed with that mortal fear that I might awaken sober and not recognize most of my friends. Being sober is not all that'll change your recognition of things. Try going into politics. Listen, gal, one of the first lessons for a secretary is not to fall in love with the boss. No, sir, let him fall in love with you. That's not my squawk. Tim's too smart a man to sell out to a bunch of dirty politicians. Well, if all this is dirt, little Charlie's gonna duck that Saturday night bed. Don't worry about it, Charlie. See you in the morgue. You see me in the... Hey, Pat. Hey, slug. Turn it off before you break it, will you? Now, get your camera set up back here. Wait a minute now. Now wait. Now wait. I got it. all set here, huh? What? No rabbits? I'll get your flashlight fixed. More, more. Let's see. All right. I'll put it behind your back and we'll go over and knock on the door. Now, when the butler comes, I'll say I won't interview the new mayor. And when Tim shows up, bing, let him have it, okay? Did you get the picture? <laughs> That's swell. Come on, let's go. I have been in office. I've been the happiest of my life. I have experienced a distinct pleasure in being able to rid this city of some of the corruption for which it has been nationally famous. Nuts. Well, I thought you said he was the right guy. Oh, he'll be all right, Regan. All he needs is a little handling. I'll say he needs a little handling. There's only one way to handle a guy like that. Get me? I'll keep your shirt on, Regan. This will work out all right. You know, he's engaged to Sylvia. Say, you'd better show this guy who he's working for quick or he'll be taking the play away from you. I know the symptoms. You'd better let me handle this my way. Now... I tell you, I know what I'm doing. You don't suppose that I've kept this party in office for ten years with kid gloves, do you? All right, Regan, if you think it's bad... I know it's best. This guy is starting to rat on us. I've always told you, Gorman, when you put a man in office to have a definite understanding with him. Garfield, 8345. Hereafter, Gorman, you better stick to your own end. 
You get the sugar and I'll run the show. And if I don't run the show, all your sugar ain't gonna keep you out of the can with the rest of the sardines. All right. Do it your own way. Oh, bud. This Regan. Yeah. Meet me at the city hall in half an hour. Yeah, we gotta convince a guy. Right. What has been done is only the beginning. I intend to smoke all these rats of political graft out into the open where they can be properly exterminated. In conclusion, on this 50th anniversary of the birth of our city, let us pray that the next 50 years will see the death of all political Judases and the birth of a new civic government that the entire nation can point to with pride. I said everything I had to say in the speech, boys. You really mean all you said? I certainly do. You fellas never give credit to a man elected to office for integrity, do you? I'd hardly say that. Haven't my actions in the last three months shown I mean what I say? If you continue as you have been doing, there can be no doubt as to your integrity. You know, Mr. Mayor, the papers can hardly be blamed for suspecting the changes you've made might not be mere gestures. What we want to know is, do you intend to remove Schaefer from the Board of Public Works? I have asked for Mr. Schaefer's resignation, and I mean it. Gee, that was a great speech, Mr. Butler. Thanks. Were you out there? No, I was listening to it on the radio. I see. Pretty, aren't they? Oh, they're lovely. Yeah, I just had to open them. Anyone been in? No. Uh, Charlie phone. He wants them exclusive for his paper. Was he sober? Well, I didn't talk to him long enough to smell his breath. I'll bet he wasn't. You know, I knew Charlie in college. He was the finest quarterback you ever saw give a signal. Well, from what he tells me, you weren't so bad yourself. You always liked football, didn't you? Still do. Remember when we used to sneak away from the law office and go to the games on Saturday? Leave some client swearing at us? We had a lot of good times together, didn't we? I'll never forget them. Anybody else phone? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Sylvia called. I want you to remember her party tonight. I almost forgot. It's her birthday. Does she still have them? What's that? Well, I mean, with the depression and everything, hardly anyone has birthdays now. Look, Ellen, you can help me. You're a girl. Oh, who's been telling you? No, I'm serious. I'll have to get a gift for Sylvia. And uh, maybe you could suggest something? Personally, I'd get her a rope. A rope? Sure, a rope of pearls. Don't be silly. I'm no millionaire. I can't be buying anything I want. Sylvia Goldman can. Now, look here, Ellen. Sylvia is a mighty fine girl. Besides, she and her father have been very good to me. Well, now you listen to me. I've been your secretary for five years, and I know you like a book. If you intend to live on your salary as mayor, you'd better not entertain the idea of marrying a millionaire's daughter. We won't go into that. And I intend to live on my salary while in office. Get that. Well, well, the coroner and the chemist. How do you do, Miss Manning? Hello, Adam. I'm fine, Boyko. Has anyone been having indigestion, doctor? A child died of two men. It came in a charity food provided by the city. That's terrible. I'll tell the mayor you're here. Dr. Robbins and Mr. Boyko. Hello, Boyko. Good day, Mr. Mayor. How do you do, doctor? How do you do, Tim? Sit down. What'd you find out, doctor? A child died of two men. And I've tested samples of charity food and found most of it affected. It was old food, Tim, that they sold the city. So the dirty graft even reaches the food we give our poor. I'll send a man responsible for this to the penitentiary if it's the last thing I do. Jailers are a reward for a man who violates public confidence. He should be burnt at the stake. Tim, I knew your father, old Tim Butler. When he used to pound the beat, 
He'd have killed skunks like these. You're right. But I was going to say I've been coroner ever since that time. <laughs> New administrations don't seem to want my job. There is not enough money on dead people to interest them. No. By the time the bodies reach the morgue, somebody else has the money. The point I want to emphasize is this. I have seen many men, like yourself, take office with a vowed intention of cleaning up their departments. And in every case, they have either succumbed to the practices of politicians or run out of office. I've given all that consideration. But while I am in office, I'm going to have a lot of fun making some of those rats hop over the hurdles. I believe you. I want a sworn statement from you two about this child and the charity food. Well, we'll give it to you, Tim. Then I'm going to set off another firecracker. Good day, Mr. Mayor. I may justice strike your enemy. Good day. Good day. Bye, Tim. Good day, Miss Manning. Good day, Ellen. Goodbye. Are we next, Ellen? I guess you are. Wait a minute. Hey, Mallethead, put that slaughterhouse toothpick away. Oh, uh, is Butler in? Oh, yes, please, gentlemen, the first. Say, what do you think this is your big aim of a You can't come through this office like that. What's this all about? Regan here didn't see the stop signal and went right through traffic. I want to talk with you, Butler, alone and right now. Well, I want to talk with you, too. Excuse me a minute, will you, Tully? Okay, Tim, I'll wait outside. I'll be with you as soon as I finish this. How does a mug like you get a permit to carry a gun? Take care of that immediately. Yes, sir. Does this gorilla always attend your interviews, Regan? I ought to slap you in jail. Maybe you should try. Maybe I will. Let's get down to business. I want Schaefer left in office. Well, that's too bad. He either resigns or is thrown out of office by Saturday. Now, look here, Butler. I've been money laden with you. You made a lot of changes and nobody has squawked. You forget, Regan, I'm the mayor. The party put you in office and we've got no room and no time for double crosses, understand? I made no promises to your party before election. You fellows were stuck for a candidate and picked on me, figuring I could be handled afterward. Well, it's your mistake, not Why, mine. you rat. I'd be careful what I said, Regan. I'll say whatever I please and you like it, see? Be careful what you say, you might get your teeth pushed down your throat. You wouldn't really do that, would you, Mr. Butler? Oh, I forgot you, strong arm. It's your turn next. Now, get this. Schaefer is out of office because I found out how he handled bids on public works. When I was a kid, my old man was a harness bull. He bought a house in this city and paid assessments for various public improvements like hundreds of thousands of others. Out of every dollar he spent, some slimy vulture got nearly half. Well, as far as I'm able, I'm going to put a stop to that. Bids are going to the most reasonable and responsible parties from now on. You've got nothing on Schaefer. I've got everything on Schaefer. How long do you think you're going to last double-crossing your friends? Don't use the word friend of me, you cheap grafter. I ought to break your neck. Lay off, fella. Get that camera, bud, quick! Just a minute, bud. Take your exercise. Relax. Stick out your mitts. You can't put those on me. What do you mean, can't? Do you want them on your wrist? Or would you rather have them around your head? Don't get rough, Rafferty. If you think you can make this stick... What do you think, Captain? It's a pretty serious offense to stick up a mayor in the city hall, isn't it? It is that. An attack with a deadly weapon is worse. I want you to lock these two up on the most serious charge you can make so they'll not be admitted to bail. Mm, I'll fix that. I've been in the sticks for five years on account of that snake, and I'd be there yet if you hadn't brought me back to town. Come on, let's get going. Come on, let's go. You read instructions carefully. It was a cinch. So 
was dumb Palookas didn't even see the door open while you were putting on your act. You're a smart girl, Ellen. Oh, you're just finding that out? Did you get the picture? We sure did. Took it myself. And when I flashed that light, it looked as though Regan was going to slug you while his patsy stuck you up. Take it over to Voicub and have it developed at once. At once. Hey, how about that party tonight, Ellen? So it's you who buys my secretary flowers. Flowers? Didn't you send those flowers out there? I, I tried to tell you about that. The florist left them. He said you ordered them, but didn't tell him where they were to be delivered. Oh, yes, I am. Uh, I forgot. I figured they were for Miss Gorman. So I put your card in and sent them. That uh, was right, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's right. That's what I thought. Okay, boss. everything on the charity food business? Yes, including the affidavits. The head of the charity board has a brother-in-law in the wholesale grocery business. Looks as though somebody else was due for a ride. They should hang people like that. <laughs> You're getting as radical as Boycott. That Russian's a bit nuts. Why, well, he thinks they should burn all the politicians. Maybe he's right. Take these to the DA's office and tell him I want a grand jury investigation at once. Oh, how'd you come out with Regan? Oh, I forgot to tell you. We got the case in Judge O'Donnell's court. Regan and Bud were remanded without bail. Isn't that something? Are we able to get in touch with Miss Gorman? No, they still say she's out. All right, thanks. I don't think you're going to find Sylvia at home for some time. Huh? Gorman's found out he can't handle you, so he's going to get you. Uh, I don't believe you. They're probably out of town somewhere. Some people like strawberry and others like horseradish. Is Tim in? Yeah, you can go right in, Charlie. Right. Come on. Hello, Tim. Hello, Charlie. Now, this guy made a crack in a speaking a while ago that he knows all about Regan and his mom. Well? Well, he wouldn't tell me, so I brought him here. What's your name? Pastro. Tony Pastro. You're a brother to Mike Pastro, aren't you? Yeah, he's a very sick. What do you know about Regan? Well, my brother knows everything. Well, how does that help me? Well, I'll tell you, to this way, my brother worked for Regan. Regan no pay him. Now my brother's a very, very sick, and I think maybe he will talk. Where is he? Mm, he's a home. Think we go to see him, he'll tell me what he knows? Mm, I think so. He's a plenty mad. All right. I'll go with you. I'll go along, too. Oh, we're not easy as a pepper man. Maybe I better go alone, Charlie. You shouldn't go alone, Tim. Forget it. Come on, Tony. How's the mic? A little better. Who's this? Oh, this is a Mr. Butler. He wants to talk at the mic. How do you do? Come in. You'll have to excuse this room. I've been sleeping out here since Mike's been sick. Is uh, Mike asleep? I don't think so. I better talk to Mike first. He doesn't know I bring you here. You tell him it'll be better for him in the long run if he plays ball with me. I tell him. Will you take off your coat? Uh, no, thanks. Sit down. Mike never told me about you. Well, we've never met. I see. Am I tired? with Mike. What is this? <laughs> you 
No, a lot of people are kind of taking pictures, too. Okay, let's go. but not Gordy. You don't need a large office to do law work in anyway. I'll be lucky if I ever get a case. You'd be surprised at the number of people I met today who actually believe what they read in the papers. Don't worry, they'll all be back when you click again. <laughs> I'd like to meet that blonde. I'm not gonna lose you those black panties. She probably made enough money to buy a dozen more pairs for the next sucker. Governor. And he did answer me. What's the say? I have followed your actions in office with satisfaction. If, as you say, you will be able to clear yourself, I have an appointment which will give you even greater room for a campaign against organized graft. The office will be that of state's attorney. Wishing you luck and hoping to hear soon of your vindication, I offer my cooperation and best wishes. Sincerely, James E. Martin, Governor. Isn't that wonderful, Tim? I, I mean, Lord. I can only get a confession that I, uh, that I was framed. Well, don't worry. Charlie's still looking for Tony. Hmm, poor Charlie. He still thinks he was responsible. Did you see Gorman today? Yes, I finally got to him. What did he say? Oh, the usual thing that everybody says about anyone thrown out of office on a morals charge. As a result of his attitude, Sylvia broke our engagement. Right. What? Oh, nothing. There's something else, Ellen. Yes? You see, when I was mayor, I used all my salary and spent what little money I had saved. All I had left was the rent for these offices. Why worry about it? You'll get by. But it means that I'll have to get along without you for a while. Well, that is, of course, until I can get a case or two to bolster the exchequer. Well, you can't get rid of me, mister. You need someone to look after you. Well, I know, Ellen, but I see well, I... I've got something that answers your financial problem. Wait a minute. Where'd this come from? Uh, Dr. Robbins left it. Alone. He said it was from an old friend of the family. Well, that's mighty fine of him. I can't accept it. Well, don't be a fool. He wants you to have it or he wouldn't have left it. $250. I call him up. He said he was leaving town for a week. Oh. Well, it looks like you stay, Ellen. Well, that's what I thought. If anybody calls, I'll be back later. Okay. I must have found it. I see, Doctor, the blood spot on this card found in a dead man's pocket corresponds to the blood spot on his suit. Absolutely. Ah, Mr. Butler. Hello, Boykov. Why, hello, Tim. I'm glad to see you. Well, doctor, I thought you'd left town. Left town? 
<laughs> Not yet, Tim. I want to thank you. For what? For that loan. Loan? Didn't you leave some money for me in my office? Not me, Tim. I haven't been to your place yet. However, I'm coming to see you in the morning. Good. See you later, Boykov. Good day. Oh, I think I understand. What do you mean, my friend? Oh, nothing. Look, I want to show you something. Hello? Is Tim there? No, no, he's back Well, I got a confession from Tony, and the police got him, and they can. Oh, really, Charlie? That's wonderful. It means Tim will be state's attorney. State's attorney? Yes, the governor said if he could clear himself, he'd appoint him. All right, up to your office. The boss will be back by that time. Oh, hey! <laughs> well, if it isn't our ex-mayor, how's the picture business? Don't slobber so much, Mug. You get your tie all dirty like your neck. Listen, you... Come on, boy, come on. You better take him with you, Regan. Make you a good cellmate someday. Yeah? Sure, you probably don't mind sleeping with lepers. Why, are you... keep him from shooting Regan, but he blasted him anyway. You seem to be in another spot, Butler. Now, wait a minute. Don't be so sure of yourself. Hello? Now, Mr. Gorman, please. Did you get Gorman? I'm calling him now. Hello, uh, Gorman? Now, uh, listen. Regan was just shot. Deader than that. Caught him red-handed. That's dynamite. You sit tight. I'll get in touch with you later. What's dynamite, old bean? Butler has just shot Regan. Mm, the boy has guts anyway. This is going to put us in one devil of a spot. Here. Get capital, 9346, Madam Ross. Capital, 9346. Got it? Madam Ross, just a moment. Here, burn these. Madam Ross, Regan has just been killed. You know what to do. Okay. DA has Dr. Robbins in his office now. Why? Dr. Robbins said there was no bullet in Regan's body, and it did not go through him. Well, how could that be? Regan was shot when Bud fired at me. Bud still insists you shot Regan. I can sure walk into the spots, all right. Oh, don't worry, boss. That one cleared up all right. They arrested Tony's brother, Mike, and that dizzy blonde. When Tony confessed and found Regan was dead, they... On the eve of being state's attorney. Gee, I know it's tough luck, boss. But if it means anything, I'm still for you. I know that, Ellen. You're a swell kid. Thanks. Why did you tell me Dr. Robbins left that money for me? Didn't he? You know he didn't. Oh, well, you know, you forget I've been keeping your accounts for a long time. And I knew you were a little short on cash. So you went to bed. Well, I didn't mean anything. Gee, I saved some money in you. You always paid me more than I could spend anyway. Poor little kid. Oh, stop calling me kid. I could kiss you. How'd you find that out? Stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Did you ever try to get out of one of these? I'm done. Where's Pat? He's over in the hospital. What happened? I don't know. They're just washing his stomach out with gasoline. Gasoline? Yeah, the doctor says he's been drinking varnish. Probably had some poison liquor. Nah. 
He just can't take it anymore. Doesn't bother me, though. I can believe that. <laughs> well, so long, Colonel. You need anything? Got plenty of smoke? Yes. Ellen brought me a carton. Okay, pal. I'll see you on the gallows. My friend. Goodbye, Ellen. Goodbye. Doctor, you admit you're a friend of Butler's. Blake, I've told you the truth. There was no bullet in Regan's body. I didn't remove it to aid Tim Butler. Well, I don't believe he did the killing anyway. Your opinion doesn't overweigh the evidence. Butler was caught red-handed. He had it in for Regan for framing him out of office. Regan was shot. The bullet didn't go through him. You admit that. Now, I ask you, how can a man be shot under those circumstances and not have the bullet in him? Yes, I've been wondering about that myself. You admit examining the body yourself. You're Butler's friend. You knew that the bullet would have markings on it to connect it with the gun Butler held. Why? You're only ruining your career. Facing a sentence as accessory. Trying to save a man who will be convicted anyway. Well, I'm sorry you don't believe me, Blake. But that's all I've got to say. You are, of course, privileged to hold me, if you like. I'm not going to hold you right now. But as district attorney, I must insist that you do not leave town. Don't worry, Blake. But you'll probably get further if you believe my statement that there was no bullet in Regan's body. Good day. Goodbye, Doctor. The man is shot. The bullet doesn't go through him. But still, the coroner doesn't find it in his body. I halfway believe the coroner, Blake. Well, I suppose Regan died of heart failure. His heart stopped all right. No. Well, you've got a case anyway. I know I have. And I don't want to miss. If I can convict ex-Mayor Butler, do you know what that means? Oh, yes. I passed my first grade politics when I married your cousin. Mr. Robbins, you're a great friend of Butler's, aren't you? Why, yes. I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Now, you'd do anything for Butler, wouldn't you? Well, I... I object, Your Honor! Objection overruled. But you were arrested for carrying a weapon. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. But, Your Honor! Objection sustained. That's all. They're trying to railroad, Tim, just as sure as you're a foot high. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What is your verdict? The defendant will rise and face the jury. Proceed. We find the defendant guilty of murder in the second degree. Oh, Charlie, I can't believe it. Has the defendant anything to say before judgment is passed? If I did, the prosecutor would object, and his honor would sustain it. 
In the opinion of this court, Mr. Butler, you have had a very fair trial. And I also feel that the jury has been very lenient with you. It is therefore the duty of this court to sentence you to imprisonment in the state's penitentiary for the rest of your natural life. Tim! Ah, Mr. Jasper, come in. It would be a swell place to throw a party. Did they... Did they convict Mr. Butler? Yeah, life imprisonment. He didn't have a chance. I see. I'll make an experiment. Come over and talk over there. The man should be rewarded for killing Regan. The only way to rid a community of grafters is to kill him. Mr. Butler did not kill Regan. Yeah, we know that, but they hung it on him. And the coroner's in a tough spot, too. What did the coroner have to do with it? Well, he examined the body and didn't find a bullet. Besides that, he's a friend of Tim's. And it's a cinch a man can't be shot and not have a bullet in him, especially if it doesn't go through. Everything is possible, my friend. To intelligence. Hey, what are you cooking? A man's stomach. A man's stomach? Yes, he died of poison liquor. Poison liquor, huh? Say, that's not Pat, is it? No, no. That man was an Italian. Oh, well, that's all right. Then. That doesn't make any difference. Say, uh, I came over that negative that Ellen left you developed for Tim, remember? Oh, yes, yes. I'll get it. Yes. Don't open that, my friend. It will change the temperature. This is no common refrigerator. It freezes to unheard of coldness. A flower placed in it will become as hard as metal in a short while. Well, Here's your next. Thanks. Oh. Give my regards to Mr. Butler and tell him not to worry. Everything will be all right. Okay, I'll tell him. Everything will be all right.
You don't have Russian's joints enough to give you the jitters. He was stewing up some waps insides when I came in. And he keeps dead frogs in the icebox. Animal frogs, though, not the Frenchman. What did Randolph say about Tim? He says he'll take the case. And with some additional evidence, he can get a new trial. I also wrote the governor. Hey, that thing is still cold. Yeah, what is it? I don't know. I got it out of Wyckoff's icebox. There's ice in it. Huh? I wonder what he uses this for. Looks like a bullet. Bullet? Charlie, that's it. Yeah. Come on, hurry. Are you nuts? No, come on. Huh? We're going to the DA's office. You're going where? Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Listen, if you're going to go to the DA's office, let me know what you're going for. What do you want to do? Judge Pennell. Hello. Judge Pennell. I'll have someone on it at once. Did anyone see the man? Okay. Jackson. Judge Connell just been knocked off in front of the city hall. Get a wagon down there and put four or five of the best boys on it. Yes. Judge Connell? All right. King! Judge Connell's been sharpened in front of the city hall. <laughs> Is Butler still in jail? Well, don't get funny. This this is serious. Put a couple of armed investigators on it right away. Shall I go with them? No. You stay here with me. Mr. Fata. What is this? Has the town gone nuts? All right. Jackson. Yes, sir. Another guy's been shot through the head. The business is good. Yeah, too good. He's another big shot, Walter Potter. Whew. Plugged at his wholesale house. Anyway, get some men out and tell them to keep their eyes peeled for the killer. Who is he? Well, well how do I know? This bird suddenly goes screwy. Two murders in an hour. Maybe war has been declared. Well, you think you're kidding. My hunch is war has been declared. Both these boys were big timers, belong to the same school. Well, somebody must warn them. That's who we'll pick up. Yeah, if I picked up everyone in this city who wants those guys, I'd have to arrest half the population. Now, scram. Yes, sir. Well, that's quite a story, Miss Manning, for fiction. You mean you don't believe me? But Charlie's already told you how he got it. Oh, I'm not doubting your story. But this office knows that Butler killed Regan. And no wild tale of ice bullets is going to save it. It might be possible, George. I've told you before, King, you're too imaginative for a prosecutor. Say, what's the idea? You trying to railroad Tim? Now, now just a minute. Remember, you're talking to the district attorney. Then you're not going to do anything about that. Oh, why, uh, certainly I am. Uh, King, uh, take this to Boycold and ask him what it's used for. You can't come in here. He's busy. Please, Mrs. Spike. I can't be busy. Must be. You are quicker than I figured, my friend. I've come to confess. I killed Regan. You killed Regan? Yes. I intended to kill all of the grafters. With my bullets of ice. Wait. Miss Edwards, take this down. Go ahead. You see, my plan was not quite yet ready when I heard Mr. Butler fighting Regan and his assassin outside my door. 
Looking out, I saw Regan's man shoot Mr. Butler. Mr. Butler struggled for the gun. I slipped into the laboratory and got my own revolver and shot Regan just as he was about to attack Mr. Butler from behind. But how could you shoot a piece of ice? I will show you. glass of water. I would have gotten rid of all the destroyers of government with my plan. They never would have caught me without the bullet. How can you tell which gun fired the shot without the markings on the bullet? Go on with your story. Certainly. Yes. All right. You see? All right, Bykoff. Put that down. Don't worry. I won't shoot myself. I prepared my own end. And I drank the water. Convenient. It was given to me by a Chinaman whose father used it to escape political torture. It won't take long. But first, I wish to say something else. Put that gun down. Are you worried, Blake? You should be. You were on my list. Give me that gun. Kindly keep your positions, all of you. Yes, Blake, you were on my list. As the dirtiest district attorney Regan ever put into office. Somebody get that gun. Stay where you are. I'll be dead in a minute. So will you. Go! Call the police and get a doctor. The doctor cannot help him. He's shot for the heart. Please, give my regards to Mr. Butler. Tell him I did not mean he should suffer on my account. Make the remain sincerely yours. Well, I guess we're all set now, eh? As long as you can keep away from revolvers and black panties. I promise. The next time I look at black panties, you'll be there. Oh, Mr. Butler. Who told you they were black? Well, I, I, I mean as a witness. I wasn't trying to compromise you. Just a second. What's that? Yes. 
Your big moments outside with a daddy. What do you mean? Dan Gorman and dear Sylvia. Sylvia here? With Gorman? Send them in. Mr. Butler will see you now. How are you? I was splendid. So nice to see you again. A little more practice with that and you'll be great. Look, we want you to come to dinner tonight. Daddy wants to talk business. I want to talk to you about the party, Jim. Now, Regan's gone, possibly for the best. What the party needs now is a leader, a man of intelligence, like yourself. With all this publicity, whatever you say or do, the public will believe. Now, here's the idea. Say, listen, Ellen, I gotta see Tim. I've only got 30 minutes to make my next copy. Wait a minute. How does that strike you? Gorman, your party is washed up and so are you. I wouldn't hit a bunch of vultures like you for all the chop suey in China. Tim. And may I suggest that you look up the boat schedules between here and Africa. Because as state's attorney, I'm going to put you out of business. Hooray! Oh, Ellen, come here, please. Let's go, Daddy. Uh, just a moment. I have a statement to make. Although it may seem a little premature, I've just been appointed state's attorney, and it forces me to announce that Ellen will no longer be my secretary. She's going to assume more intimate duties as my wife, providing, of course, she's interested in a state's attorney as a husband. What do you think? Hey, Pat. Sure. I think I'll get married. 